Welcome to Car and Driver's Lightning Lap. Our annual track test, we traveled to Virginia International Raceway, or VIR, to lap the hottest performance cars of the year. Usually when we're reviewing a car, we're looking at everything about it. Price, how it drives on the street, features, and performance. With Lightning Lap, we're looking at one thing, lap time. <laughs> One of our editors thought that we needed a U.S. equivalent of the famous Nürburgring times. And so he found VIR and we run the Grand Course configuration, which is a 4.1 mile course. And that is as close as we can get in the United States to something as huge as the Nürburgring. VIR mixes up uh, a need for horsepower, for brakes, for handling in a way that other racetracks don't. There are over 30 turns and uh, a lot of elevation change, all types of corners, increasing radius, decreasing radius, high speed sections, uh, high speed sequences, that are new, like uh, the uphill S's, you, you're averaging over 100 miles an hour easy in just about everything. Car companies go to the Nürburgring to set times, and those times within the last few years, those times have kind of become very important numbers for them to bandy about, and we thought, well, why should we have to go to Germany to do that? We have beautiful road courses right here. And that's kind of the thinking behind uh, Lightning Lamp, kind of a homegrown Nürburgring. And this year we've had more car companies directly involved, sending people, sending tires. It's kind of becoming more important. We are creating a, a new benchmark, and, and a benchmark in the US, and uh, many manufacturers have started even testing a lot of cars here and, and publishing their lap times. It's a full performance test, from braking, to acceleration, to road holding, to handling, to how confident you feel in the car. It mixes all those things together into a time. And the time is just such a simple way of categorizing cars. Lap time under eight minutes at the Nürburgring is considered very good. And here, that threshold is, is right about three minutes. It's really tough with the short time we have to get that perfect lap. One of the tricks is you have to adapt to the way each car drives differently right away. We're driving four or five cars in a day, sometimes more. We bring out four editors, Aaron Robinson, who is an, our executive editor, uh, Casey Colwell, who's a technical editor, Mike Austin, who's a technical editor, and myself. Uh, we had 20 cars this year. We usually choose the newest, hottest metal. Performance modifications, um, if a car gets more horsepower, we usually test it. If a car gets a handling package or a brake package, we usually test it out and see what it can do. The cars are divided into categories based on what it would cost to replicate our lap time. Performance enhancing options are included in what we call the base price. Options that don't improve performance, like leather seats or a sunroof, are not factored into the price. LL1 is for cars less than $30,000. LL2 covers cars costing $30,000 to $60,000. LL3 is for cars $60,000 to $120,000. LL4, 120,000 to just under 240,000. And finally, LL5 is for cars that cost over $240,000. This year we brought along a couple of police cars and created a new category for them we lovingly call LL Oink. We put the cars together in the price grouping because usually you see similar performance in those segments. And what this also lets us do is figure out if anything's particularly fast for the money. And now, here are the cars of 2013. In the LO Oink category, we have the 370 horsepower Dodge Charger Pursuit facing off against the Chevrolet Caprice PPV. PPV stands for Police Pursuit Vehicle. Both came with a full copload of sirens and lights, which we almost never switched off. We did invite the Ford Taurus based police interceptor, but Ford couldn't get us one in time. 
Four cars competed for LL1 honors this year. The Fiat 500 Abarth holds a few distinctions. At 23,900, it's the least expensive car this year. It's also the least powerful with 160 horsepower, and it's the lightest at 2,554 pounds. Subaru's BRZ comes in at $26,265. The new BRZ offers rear drive flavor at front drive prices. It's not exactly powerful at 200 horsepower, but the BRZ is a true sports car and a handling delight. Ford's new Focus ST is more than just a powerful Focus. It's a thorough reinvention. It's a car that is dedicated to handling and taking on the Volkswagen GTI. The 252 horsepower 2 liter turbo is as strong and as attention grabbing as the Tangerine Scream paint. Sneaking in just below the LL1 price cap is the most expensive car in LL1, the Hyundai Genesis 3.8 R-Spec. While it might be the most expensive in the class, it's also far and away the most powerful with the 348 horsepower V6 and the best in class power to rate ratio of 10 pounds per horsepower. Three cars competed in LL2 this year. First up is the 426 horsepower Camaro SS 1LE. Essentially a track package, the 1LE shares many of its components with the supercharged Camaro ZL1. The result is a completely transformed driving experience and a track devouring Hellion for $37,000 $35. We've been itching to test the new redesigned BMW 3 Series at VIR to see how it would stack up against its predecessor. In hopes of setting a quick lap time, BMW sent us a rear drive 335i. With performance enhancing options, this 335i cost $46,795. The second Camaro in LL2 is the 580 horsepower supercharged ZL1. The most powerful Camaro available from Chevy, the $56,550 ZL1 is a car that is seemingly designed to take on everything BIR can dish out. With eight cars competing, the largest group this year is the LL3 class. Here they are in order of price. The most powerful car we've ever had at Lightning Lap is the 662 horsepower Ford Shelby GT500. A supercharged monster, the Shelby rang in at 63,080 and is the arch nemesis of the less powerful Camaro ZL1. At $69,720, the 315 horsepower Porsche Boxster S isn't the most powerful car in the class. Actually, it's the least powerful. But it is a track devouring delight. Completely redesigned and fractionally larger than before, the mid-engine Boxster S is at VIR to prove that it's not all about horsepower. With an engine closely related to the one in the Audi R8, you might consider the Audi RS5 to be a sports coupe with the soul of a supercar. For $69,795, you get a high-revving 450-horsepower V8, a 7-speed dual-clutch gearbox, and all-wheel drive. The Audi S6 is a more powerful version of the A6 luxury sedan. A twin-turbocharged V8 makes 420 horsepower and is quite effective at hurtling the 4,369-pound sedan around the track. With performance-enhancing options, the S6 came in at $72,795. BMW's hottest sedan, the M5, is new this year. BMW's in-house performance specialists, the M Division, have slipped in a 560 horsepower twin-turbo V8 in place of the previous M5's naturally aspirated 500 horsepower V10. The cost? $92,095. We've previously tested a number of 911s at VIR, but this is the first time we've tested the new 911. Known to Porsche files as the 991, the new platform is slightly larger and wider than before. Don't worry, it still has a flat 6 hanging behind the rear wheels. In 400 horsepower Carrera S trim, with a dual clutch 7 speed and a few other performance enhancing options, the 911 came in at $105,945. Last year we tested the Mercedes-Benz C63 AMG Coupe. This year Mercedes sent us the most extreme version of that car, the C63 AMG Black Series. With spoilers, canards, and fender flares, the Black Series looks the part, but it's more than just an appearance package. The Black Series gets a complete chassis overhaul and a more powerful 510 horsepower engine for $113,525. Sneaking in below the LL3 price cap is the $116,995 BMW M6. Like its brother, the M5, the M6 is a 560 horsepower twin-turbo V8. It is a bit lighter than the M5, which may give it an advantage on track. Two very different cars competed for LL4 honors this year. Coming in at $132,875 is the 550 horsepower Jaguar XKRS. 
Jaguar's most extreme performance car, this fetching aluminum two-door, is a tweaked version of the already quick XKR and will be sold in very limited numbers. At the top of the LL4 price class is the 562 horsepower Ferrari 458 Italia. A supercar in every sense of the word, the mid-engine 458 is a machine seemingly built to dominate VIR. At $236,925, the Ferrari is the second most expensive car this year, but the exhaust note alone might be worth the cost of entry. Sitting alone in the LL5 class is the $379,575 Lexus LFA. A carbon fiber masterpiece with a wailing 553 horsepower V10, the LFA is a very special and rare machine. It's so rare, in fact, that we've been trying to get Lexus to cough one up to test at VIR for years, but it took the generosity of an LFA owner to make that happen. Now that you know how Lightning Lap works and which cars we brought along this year, be sure to watch the rest of our videos from BIR for lap times and how each car fared on track. Thanks for watching.